We're recording. Okay, Steve, take it away. Okay, why don't we go through and just introduce ourselves and let Mr. Marling know how long you've been in this business. Carson, do you want to start? And Sure, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, I've been here for about six months, so I think I'm the freshest member of the team so far. Um, yeah. Excellent. Welcome. Good choice, Carson. Thank you. <laughs> Ben? Okay, uh, Ben Bowser. I've been here in Triumph at the Daily Bulletin for between two and two and a half years now, but I've uh, been in the industry for over 20 years. Okay, very good. And when Kevin talks about Sandbagger, uh, might be a little bit of Ben there. <laughs> Him and Zach. Zach, do you want to? <laughs> yes, I'm uh, Zach Bates. I've been here in Clanton for Right at almost uh, 21 years now. All right, Zach. Wow. And uh, we have the newest member uh, of our team, uh, Brittany. Hello, Brittany. We cannot hear you, Brittany. Maybe we'll jump to Kevin while they're figuring that out. Okay. Uh, well, I'm in, uh, I'm in trying with Ben and I've been here since uh, March of 2013. So like eight years. Very good. But what did you do before Kevin? Uh, for about four years, I worked for my in-laws, um, which I had to get away from that to save the family. Um, but uh, prior to that, I worked for the Asheville Citizen Times uh, for about seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin is Can another one. Of What's that, Steve? I said Kevin is another one of those sandbaggers. But, uh, oh, well, you taught us how to do it. <laughs> Pretty talented uh, guy. Any luck there? Hey, can Brittany? you hear us now? Yep. Yeah. Got it. Hey, good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> How long have you been here, Brittany? A week. <laughs> so that's pretty new, John. We've got uh, somebody who's got a lot to learn, but she's really. Uh, well, welcome, really Brittany. Thank you. And then I'll introduce you to our star. Uh, we have uh, Elle Fuller and uh, Tippy Hunter. They uh, drive this thing pretty hard. So, Elle, do you want to introduce yourself to John or have you met John before? Here we go. Yeah, we had some moments of chat. So, Elle we Fuller. We had some coffee this morning. We had some coffee. Yes, indeed. Big <laughs> <All right>. cup. <laughs> I have been here for two years and um, I was just thinking about it when Kevin was talking about moving from the in-laws to newspaper. I have had my whole career in sales and marketing. So this is um, a different side of things um, for sure, working for the newspaper, but really enjoy the things that we do digitally here at TPI. Tippy, Very good. Um, Tippy Hunter, I've been here 11 years. I came straight from Russell Athletic and um, sitting behind, behind L is the best place for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smart like that. Rachel. Rachel McCullough, I've been here about a year and a half. And? Caesar. Um, I came from uh, auto repair and tire business that I owned for 20 years. So this is my first time in sales of this sort. What's your side hustle, Rachel? <laughs> I have a women's clothing boutique online. And then we um, also went into a storefront uh, several months ago. So. So an eclectic mix of people here, John. Oh, very good, very good. 
And I'm John Marlene, founder of Pulse Research. And I'm proud to say I've been in this business 51 years. Started out as an ad rep, and then I did some time in circulation, classified, a little bit in production, news, then became a marketing manager, then general manager, then publisher of seven papers, and left them to found Pulse Research 36 years ago. Enjoyed every minute of it. Love working with community publications, doing everything we can to assist and support you because it's so important, you know, to have a viable local community press. Have somebody at the city council meeting to uh, be the watchdog. So I appreciate very much you taking the time to be together today. And I just want to say I will do everything I possibly can to support each one of you individually. I recognize and appreciate how unique these times are, and I will do whatever I can to provide you with some insights and some suggestions and ideas to achieve your you know, goals, you know, both individually and for your publications. And we have the pleasure of working with about 600 publications around North America, and so it's unique. We learn a lot each day you know, from our clients and, and um, suggestions and ideas on what's working. So thanks again for, for being here this morning. I truly appreciate it. And I want to just say that today's, the purpose of today's meeting, I'm getting my screen going here, is a follow-up to last month. We kicked off and introduced your new Boone audience shopping data. And this is, this is a major, major plus because before you had regional data from all you know, different types of publications, but with the support of Boone, and I'm sure you were aware that there was an aggressive outreach in fighting your audience, both print from your paid, your TMC, and your, and your uh, digital websites to participate in the survey. And, it was, and it, was, it was very successful. We have for you, and it's live in your program right now, is the answers to the questions your local businesses would ask. Do you plan to shop at a furniture store? Do you plan to you know, change and get a new realtor? Do you plan to change and get a new chiropractor, financial advisor? What type of restaurant do you plan to eat at? So we just ask the questions the businesses would ask. And the information is of your publication, website, and the Boone papers right around you. It's very local. It is the information that the businesses would ask. And so that, is, that, that gives you a unique advantage in the community to assist and support your businesses. Because the bottom line is, and I think you'll agree with me, times are uncertain. And they want to know. They want a crystal ball. They want solutions. They want ideas on how to navigate you know, going forward, okay? And so I'm happy to answer any questions about how we did the research, you know, the, the, the basis of the research, usability, et cetera. But I wanna focus this morning, the purpose of these get-togethers with a smaller group from the big corporate kickoff was to talk about your specific, you know, concerns, questions, and any reasons why you don't use Pulse regularly. And I wanna thank you for providing very specific input. And so what I'd like to do first is go over the, the questions that you brought forward. And thank you, Tippy, for coordinating. I really appreciate it. And so let's focus on some of the things that you guys would like to get some assistant help or feedback on, okay? So one of, the, one of the questions was asked is sometimes the numbers are too low for a niche client. It would be counterproductive to try and show them. You know, I, I get that. I hear that a lot. And, it, and whoever made this comment, would you like to add any further detail to it? And then we'll kind of talk about it. Okay, let's not be bashful. Yeah. Um... It, there, there was. I don't. I can't remember a specific example that I had, but um, the example I was talking to someone in the office the other day about it, and I talked about underwater basket weaving. If there's an underwater basket weaving business, uh -huh. you know, and I pulled up them on Pulse, there'd probably be like three people in the next three months that would want one. You know, um, <laughs> so that was just the, the basis of the, the idea. Uh huh. Well, the reality is, and. It's very important. The percentage may be low, 
and the number may be low. And I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of examples. A retirement home, three tenths of 1% from your Boone audience there say that yes, they plan to get move into a retirement home in the next 12 months. Doesn't sound like a big percentage, does it, Carson? Kind of a you know, small itsy bitsy. But here's the deal. Three tenths of 1% to them is a big deal, okay? Because, and what's your circulation there, there Carson? Um, well, it depends on the product, I guess. Well, just Somebody roughly. else to jump in with a better number. <laughs> just roughly. Um, I know Lake and Lake Martin Living, and we have, I think we print 11,000 Lake and 8,500 Lake Martin Living magazines. The newspaper, I'm not sure the number, but yeah. Well, let's just do this for everybody. Let's say there's 10,000 households you guys reach, okay? And take three tenths of 1%, that is 300 households, 300. Okay, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but to them, 300 looking for a retirement home means at roughly $48,000, $4,000 a month, would you agree, Carson, that is a huge amount of uh, buying power? 300, you know, spending 48,000 each for a retirement home? Oh, yeah. Big deal. Same thing with an RV. You know, an RV, and I didn't look up the number, but many times it's like 1% or 2%. Once again, a very small percentage. You know, but 1%, you know, of 10,000 you know, is a hundred and a hundred at let's say 50,000 to a hundred thousand for an RV, huge number. So the point being is even though the percentage might be small, the number might be small, the actual purchasing power of those buyers that you reach is huge, huge. So think of it from their side of the, the, the side of the fence, put yourself in their shoes. If you're an RV dealer, if you're running a retirement home, would that be a significant opportunity for you? And you'll get in and say, yeah, that would be huge. So in summary, and thanks for the question, Carson, the numbers, if they might seem small for a niche client, but the actual purchasing power, the opportunity, the value from their perspective is significant. You know, they want it. And that's one thing is these businesses, when they see the opportunity, want to get a larger share of it. Would you agree with that, Steve Baker? They want to get as much as they can. Yep, they sure do. Okay. And did that answer your question, Carson? Do you feel a little more confident about, you know, a number being lower, but the opportunity that it represents of your audience buying power? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the idea that they're trying to get all that they can. You know, they're trying to bring in any clients, and especially in the case, even underwater basket weaving, they may want to buy more than once. You know, they may want to buy multiple baskets and keep coming back. So, yeah. But they recognize that underwater basket weaving is not a universal demand. And they're going to be quite excited to find out, well, what's the actual number? I remember I was making a presentation to a birdseed store once. And the number wasn't very big, the percentage, but to them it was huge. It was much bigger than they ever thought it was. Okay. Okay, so thank you, Carson, for the question. Appreciate it. Okay, next. Business, and I get this a lot. Business does not believe the shopping information. The client argues about the numbers on the survey. Then I'm stuck with trying to make them believe in two products, our publication and Pulse. So who, 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 who brought forward that question concern? You're smiling, Carson. Was that also you? It, 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 was, it was me, buddy. It was all me. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the cynic here. So you're the guy this morning. You're the guy. Well, I appreciate you bringing it up because there, that is one of the most common questions, concerns, is about the usability, the validity of the shopping information. And I'm going to be quite blunt, Carson. 
is if you don't believe and have confidence in the numbers, you're not going to use it, right? I mean, it's as simple as that, okay? I was an ad rep once. I get that. I mean, it's, it's your credibility on the line there. And so let, let's chat about that a second, okay? The most important thing I've learned in all these years is that when you engage with the business, and it could be on a phone call, it could be in a drop-in call, it could be an email, et cetera. But that first engagement, Carson, we've got to make sure that that business understands that this is their research. This is information about and for their business, okay? And so when I pick up the phone or I'm on site and I walk in and we're doing a cold call, you know, I always say, hey, I've got some good news, you know, you know Mr. Furniture Store. We just did a furniture store shopping survey. Let me repeat that. We just did a furniture store shopping survey. Now pretend, Carson, for a moment you're a furniture store, okay? And if I walk into your business and I say, hey, Carson, I got some good news. We just did a furniture store shopping survey. Would that get your attention? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And why would it get your attention, Carson? Hey, John. Yeah. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Harry Thompson is having a problem getting into the meeting. Do you, I, I don't know if you have to let her in or. Oh, let me just, just a second, please. Sorry, so sorry. This is weird. Because now well, I'm not. Yeah. Well, John's working on that. Uh, one of the things I want you guys all to remember is we uh, publishers and uh, all the way up have uh, made the investment in the Marlene and the Pulse research. And I don't know how many of you have ever been involved with uh, research done independently, but uh, that's why you hire independent research folks to answer questions like Carson's, you know, when they say, well, I don't believe the research. Uh, that's why you uh, have a footnote there that says that it's not done by us, but it's done for you. Mm -hmm. So just to uh, yeah. reiterate that, and it's really important that we all understand that this is a key goal, just like digital is for, uh, 2022, so is Pulse. Mm -hmm. We've invested in that. It's really up to us to learn how to use it and to make use of it. So if you want to be successful, that's what it's going to take in 2022. So did okay. Carrie get on? I should be. I did. Sorry. All right. I'm having some internet issues this morning, but I'm here. Welcome. All right. <laughs> Okay, so and thank you, Steve. And let, let me just reinforce what, what Steve said. Is that I totally recognize that using information and engaging with the business with information is, you've got to be comfortable and confident in it. But let me assure you this, and I've gone in a four, like Steve knows this, on some tough four-legged sales calls. And it's the information about their business. And this is the key. It's about and for their business. And would you guys agree with me that the businesses, and just think of some, you know, in your mind this morning, do they care about their business? Is that an extremely important part of their lives is their business? Absolutely. And so when you engage with information, that's about their business, that is frankly a huge breakthrough, okay? And so back, back Carson, so the furniture store. So here's, here's the most important tip recommendation. When I engage, I always say, I've got some great news. We, Pulse, did a furniture store shopping survey. Many times I say, what do you mean by that? Well, we just asked the same questions you would ask, okay? Oh, well, like what? Well, would you ask you plan to shop at a furniture store? Yeah, of course I would. Would you ask what do you plan to buy? Living room furniture, bedroom furniture, dining room furniture, mattresses. Yeah, I'd ask that. And then you, what happens is you got their attention 
and they say, can I see that? Because they want to know about and for their business, okay? But here's the opposite, here's the opposite. You come in and you say, Boone's got some shopping information. Boone did a research survey. What happens in that case is, is that they think, and I'll be blunt, they think you did the research to try and sell them something. Because the radio station comes in with their research. The TV station comes in with their research. Direct mail comes in with their research. And so when they think it's your research, not furniture research, but it's research about you, then they get very defensive. And I know it's a fine line because ultimately the information is about the shopping of your audience, right? But it's the way you engage with it. It's furniture. We ask the same questions you would ask. You get their buy-in. You get them excited. You get them wanting to, to see the information because they want to know. Once again, businesses in today's world don't want to be sold. They want solutions. They want ideas and solutions and how to navigate and get more business in this world. Okay? And so let me pause. Carson, does, does that help in, in how to engage so that they want to talk about, they want to engage with the information? Carson? Yeah, and I, I just wanted to clarify that um, I, uh, I, I believe in the research. I think it's valid research. It's, you know, it's just like you said, the client um, thinking that, you know, we just kind of pumped out some numbers to try to pitch to them and sell to them and this and that. Um, and I, I tried, in those instances, I tried to back it up saying this came from uh, uh, the Nielsen research, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and tried to try to validate a little bit, but yeah, I mean, you, you're you're right, and that, that helps. Okay, I appreciate that. Just remember, all of you guys, and this is from real world experience. When they get and they understand, it's information about their business category that makes all the difference in the world. Now, I went in a four legged sales call. We went into a CEO realtor. The realtor immediately said, "This is a cold call. I'm not interested in advertising. Print is dead." And I said, well, I've, I've got some good news. Well, what's that? We did a real estate survey. What do you mean by that? Well, we asked you plan to list your home. Really? And then he immediately wanted to see it. And then he wanted to know, well, how many households are going to list their home? Does that make sense that a realtor would want to know how many households do you reach who want to list their home? Absolutely. Okay. And so I put in here, and I'm going to share these slides. This, I'll send the slideshow out here. I put in a link here. There was a Boone rep who about, oh, it was roughly eight, ten months ago, said that an attorney laughed at her when she shared the Pulse information. Laughed at her. And she didn't, you know, she kind of, you know, didn't know what to do. And so she, you know, said, I'm sorry, and she left, et cetera. So she called me up and said, I need help. And so what I suggested she do is go back in and talk to the realtor. And this is another suggestion and tip. You know, if, if, the, if the business argues about the information, well, I don't think the numbers are, you know, are credible, they're too big, et cetera. Say, that's okay. That's okay. You're the expert. Okay. Let's talk about it for a second. Okay. Pulse research shows that 10% are going to buy, but you're the expert. You've been at, you know, how long have you been in the legal business? Well, 20 years. Okay. If you were to do your, this survey, ask the question, do you plan to change or get a new attorney? What percentage in your expertise do you think are going to get or change a new attorney? And let them answer. Because what's going to happen is you get their engagement. And many, many times they're just throwing that out of objection, you know, to get you out of there. Businesses are very, very good at coming up with objections. Excuses not to advertise, right? Because in the average week, the businesses in your community, you know, are being called on 40 to 60 times by some media representative to sell them something. From print to radio, to direct mail, to the high school, you know, the high school's got a publication, chamber, direct mail, on and on and on. So they become very good at coming up with excuses. But back to the attorney. So she asked him, what do you think? 
and and let's say the percentage was 10% for policy. So well, I think it would be about 5%. She took 5% times the households they reached. And the guy said, I get it. That's great. And he bought, he signed a contract. True story. And so it's okay to say, let's talk about it. And so if, if, the, if the worst case happens, don't worry about it. Just ask them, what do you think? You're the expert. Get their buy-in, and when you get their buy-in, just multiply it times the households you reach. And that's all Pulse does in the presentation. It's really, really simple. We ask the question they would ask. We get the percentage who said, yes, they're going to shop, because you know you've got buyers who are going to buy cars, right? You've got households you reach who are going to use a realtor. You've got households you reach who are going to go to a fast food restaurant, a grocery store, et cetera. All Pulse does is ask. And that gives us the percentage, and we just take the percentage times the number of households you reach. It's as simple as that. Okay? And so, Carson, does that, does, does that help you? Does that answer the question about using the information, engaging, it's their information, and helping them understand the opportunity? Are we okay? Yep. Good. Excellent. Okay. Next question here. Oops. Okay. Call planner is nice in theory, but ultimately cluckier. And uh, what do I got here? Cluckier. <laughs> nice spelling there. I did this late last night. Cluckier version of Excel or Google. Okay. It, it would be, and then also related to the call planner, be nice to categorize the type of call, cold call, discovery call, annual meeting, etc. Who asked that question or who shared that uh, suggestion concern? I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm um, concerned. I, I, I would have asked Tippy to like mix them up a little bit if I knew they'd all be in a row like this. But this, this is this is my this is my last one. I think I'll have three total. So. Sure, Carson, I am so sorry for picking on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you want me to add? Or okay, so let's go. I, I, put, I put in a link here. Okay, and let's go to the call planner here. Okay, there we go. So I put in some businesses into my call plan. Okay. And so if you want to, Carson, we can meet later in the day and you can go over the details. But if you think it's going to be helpful to the whole group, let's do it now. And by the way, I love yeah, we can do the whole group. Yeah. I love your guys' suggestion. Why? Because and Steve Baker and I worked together for a long, long time. It's with your input and suggestions and ideas that helps Pulse be the best we can be for you. Okay. So I really appreciate your input this morning. So so Carson, did you say you'd like to cover it now or would you like to cover it later, just you and I, or what would you like to do? Uh, yeah, we can do the whole group. I mean, I think it would benefit everybody. Okay, cool. And so, would you like me to just kind of go through it, or do you want to just share some specific points? I want to make sure I answer your questions, Carson. Yeah. Um, if, if I could look at it myself, there, there's certain just, I, I'm trying to remember which screen I'm thinking of in my head, but there's there's some ways that i think it could be streamlined as far as because it's like when you add a business to the caller and then you go to this other screen um it it, it forces you back out and there's just some little little things that, that's ultimately what i was talking about was like a just the streamlining the process so I, if you just want to like go through a whole client start, okay start sure. finish, yeah i'll be glad to i'll go back to the dashboard okay so we'll go back to the home page. And by the way, I want some person talked about, well, I don't use polls for special sections. And I want to point out that under prospects here, so clicking on prospects, we've got a special sections prospect tool. So when you click on special sections, up will come a list of pretty general special sections. Okay, so let's say you've got a health and wellness special section coming up, you click on it. 
and it'll give you a list of business categories that Paul suggests would be excellent prospects for a health and wellness special section. So we've got probably roughly 20, 25 special sections that are pretty common. And then it gives you a list, you know, of suggested business categories, okay? And so well, back to the call planner. So let's pick a category here, new or change dentist. So we click on find. It'll bring up a list of dentists and it's a Google mashup, so it's not perfect, okay? And by the way, it defaults to your Boone Group primary location. You can change the zip code to make it your local area, okay? And you see the little red tag here? You click on the red tag, you click on add, and then you can name your area and say, make this my home view. And from that point on, when you go into the prospecting tool, any of the mapping output, it'll default to your zip code, your community. Okay, great time saver. Just wanna kinda of reinforce that. Okay, no, so now we've got a list of dentists, so I'm gonna add them to the call plan. So I add to call plan, add to call plan, add to call plan, add to call plan, okay? So we good so far? Then I go up to my call plan, and it'll have the businesses I just added today, Tuesday, the dentists I just added, plus the ones I added yesterday, Monday, okay? Now, the call plan was set up to be a very usable, simple tool resource to help you put together a call list and then help you very quickly engage, okay? So you can connect with them by phone call, by email, or drop in. So it gives you the words to say on a phone call. So you click right here and up will come the words to say for, and I've got a slower internet out here in the mountains, it'll give you the words to say to engage over the phone. So you create a list and then right there at your fingertips, boom, 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 you've got the words to say. Here's the phone number for David Young, the dentist. If you've got a phone conversation with them, once again, you know, to help local businesses, we participated in a unique survey. We asked the same questions you would ask. Do you plan to change or get a new dentist? Oh, really? What'd you find out? Look at that. You've got almost 3,000 households who plan to change your new dentist. Okay. And you've got a couple other talking points. Over 4,000 households who need a dental checkup, teeth cleaning. We also asked a lot of other questions. You know, would you like to know more? Happy to share this information with you. They say, yeah, let's get together. Okay. And then that you mark it as engaged, that you talk to them on the phone, and that gives you pulse points, right? Trips to Hawaii, et cetera, sponsored by Steve Baker. And then you've got your pulse flyer that you can take out. And one person asked, well, it's confusing. Which pulse presentation tool do I use? You've got the teaser, you got the flyer, and you got the one page. Now I'm gonna go over that in just a second. The most popular one is the flyer. This is the flyer. It's got the big number, what's in it for them. This is the attention grabber. Look at that, almost 3,000 households are going to change or get a new dentist in the next 12 months. Change or get new, okay? That's not John, just- I, I'm sorry, John, can I interrupt real quick? Yes, please. Um, something I'm noticing here on this flyer is one of my questions uh, that I was gonna ask. Uh, mm -hmm. You did this search uh, based on, I guess, where you're at or where Carson's at? I, it, it defaulted in this case to Tyrone. To, to, yeah. uh, to Tryon? Tryon, sorry, yes. Okay, you, all right. That's, you, that's what I was going to ask is because it says Tryon Daily Bulletin on there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I, and, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be getting ahead. Uh, one of my questions was going to be is that mine, mine is set up for Tryon, but on my flyers, it says Lake Magazine. Okay. And the reason for that is, let me, uh, let me just stop here. I'm going to go back. So when you create a flyer, there's an editing pin just to the right of the headline. Okay. That right. gives you the opportunity to change the audience. And the reason it, it defaults to, to try on 
or excuse me, to Lake Magazine is that's the that's the largest circulation. And so Pulse okay. is set up to default to the largest, but you can change it. Just click on change audience information on the pen here and up will come all your publications under Steve Baker's team. Then you can change it to try on. <laughs> Still early here in Oregon, okay? So then you can change it. Okay, so I just changed it. All right, so if there's something that's one of our products that's not listed there, can we add it? Absolutely. We can okay. add it permanently for you by just sending an email to support at pulseresearch.com, and we can add it to this list, or you can click on custom audience, and you can put in the name, a label, and you can put in the, the number of estimated households. Okay. Okay. So if you, if there is, let me click on cancel here. So if you have a audience option that isn't on the list, please tell us and we can add it or you can put in custom. Okay. But it's going to default to Lake because that's the largest circulation, but then you just click here and up will come the list. Okay. And then you can put it in. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Perfect. Sorry to interrupt you there. Oh, that was great. That's great. That's what we're getting together today is for, you know, for exact questions like that. Okay. All right. Okay. So back to the call planner, back to the flow here. Okay. And Carson, you're the hero this morning. I appreciate your questions. Okay. So now you've got the appointment, you've got the appointment with them. And by the way, you can click right here for spec ads. Then it goes into your Metro creative graphics spec ad program. You can print, and in many times, by the way, just keeping the flow here, you leave a phone call message. And you leave a message that says, I'm gonna send you some information about I need a dentist. So when you click on the email here and send in an email and follow up, and some of our clients have gotten great results from this. I need a new dentist. Look at that headline. I need a new dentist, okay? That grabs their attention. And then you give them some, some, I should say some benefit statements. One of our clients calls these squirrel statements, squirrel statements, get their attention, benefit, benefit, benefit. You've got almost 3,000 households who plan to change your new dentist. You've got over 4,000 who plan to have a dental checkup. Over 3,600 who need teeth cleaning. This is your opportunity. So when you send them an email like this, and all you have to do is just cut and paste it, put it into your own email, you know, so you can personalize it a bit, you can track it in your own email, but phenomenally effective. And so we're gonna click off here, and we're gonna go back to the call planner. So I'm gonna click off and go back to the dashboard. So I'm clicking on call planner, okay? And so now with David Young Dennis, now I'm gonna put in what happened. This is kind of your tool resource to keep up with and keep track of what's going on, what you're doing. So you just click on add activity. And so what type of call was it? It was a phone call, voicemail, et cetera. So it was a phone call. What was the purpose of the call? Okay, the purpose of the call, it was a cold call. It was a needs analysis, discovery, et cetera. Okay, and it was new business. Okay, what did you present? I presented print and digital, I presented a special package, okay? What's my next action? My next action is a spec ad, let's say. When, you can put in the dates. You click here on the calendar and I wanna come in on Friday, okay? And I can add it to my Google Calendar, Apple, Yahoo, Microsoft, and I can put in some notes. Okay, so Carson, so as we're going through this, Share with me any suggestions, ideas, you know, that you have. Um, well, I started to jump in on the email part because I, I, I wanted to be able to edit it from there, but I guess you could just copy and paste it in your own email and do it. Um, other than that, um, nothing I can think of right this moment. I'm sure as we're going, I might think of something, but. No problem. That's why we're together this morning. And so we click on. Hey, John. Yes. We have a question. Um, yeah. 
Can you, from this screen, the call planner screen, when you mark it as engaged or whatever, can you also uh, mark it as sold and go ahead and, and will it go ahead and calculate points from this screen? What you can do is right here, add sales, okay? And so you come into the presentation here. So I clicked on add sales. So you already got, you, know, you clicked on engage, you got the points for engage. And so now I clicked on, let me do that again. I did that kind of fast. You click on the sales status, okay? And then you click here, you know, on the presentation. Oops, I clicked that. I'm sorry. Carson, can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. And so, am I having audio trouble, Tiffy? Okay, we can me... hear you now. Sorry, but we missed the whole thing. Okay. So yes, you you click on Add Sales. You click on edit, you got the presentation, you click on edit, and then you click on mark as sold. Okay? And then you put in the date you sold it. Okay? You click on set, you could put in the type of sale, was it a new sale, renewal, or is it split between new and renewal? Let's put it in as a new sale. Let's put it in as 15,000, okay? And then click on set. Okay, and there you get the points for the sale. Okay. That's, that's perfect. I think that was a little bit maybe of what Carson was talking about, about flipping between screens, because if you were doing something from the call planner, it was our misunderstanding that you also then had to go back to the, the dashboard and, and, and mark it as sold and whatnot. So thank okay. you. So excellent, excellent. You can do it back from the dashboard, but you can also do it right in the call planner. Okay. And once again, I want to repeat any ideas and suggestions that you have to make Pulse easier, you know, more effective, we want to hear about it, okay? Okay, so since we're on the call planner, any other questions or suggestions on the call planner? Okay, okay. So let's go back here to the dashboard and let's go back to the I'm going to go back to my screen share. Okay, just a second. Bear with me while I switch screens here. Okay, can you see call planner nice in theory? Okay, so let's, okay, if there are no other questions on the call planner, we'll move forward. Having difficulty with spec ads. Okay, I have, John, I have a quick question. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you. No, no, I um, is, is there any way to send a follow up to a calendar so it can kind of like book appointments and keep up with where you need to go and who you need to see as you're following up with people? Yeah, back on the call planner, you can put in your next follow up step. You can put it into a Google Calendar, a Yahoo Calendar, Apple, you know. Microsoft, et cetera, and if you include the note, what you want to do. Okay, wonderful. Okay, and it puts it right in your calendar. That's awesome, thank you. Yeah. Hey, John. Yes, Steve. It was actually one of our team members that uh, started the, the discussion to get you and uh, your group together with Moon Newspapers. Yes. Uh, Zach. Zach is our Pulse... Uh, wizard here. So, uh, Zach, do you have any comments or anything yet? Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I, I've used Pulse since we started. I guess it was, uh, what, May or June of last year, I think, 20. And I've made, I mean, I can't even count the number of sales that I've made with it. And I, I kind of got out and got started with it when you know, we first went through the first little online training where you kind of train yourself mm -hmm. and listen to John's presentations there for those several sessions and then got your certificate. And then from, you know, day one, that's what I've been doing is 
you know, going out and sharing that information that we've always had. But now with it being more of, of the local, like it is, uh, to me, I've, I've talked with one person already. I'm in the midst of a, a follow-up with them now. And when I was able to share with them, you know, the localness of it, um, I mean, you, I could, t- I mean, I was excited about it and I, I could tell they're excited about it also. I think this will just make it even better than it already has been for well, about a year you. and a half. Well, Zach, I- actually, Zach actually used that uh, Pulse presentation uh, as uh, one of our success stories. And that's what got uh, the folks at the top of Boone uh, looking at uh, Pulse. So. Well, thank you, Zach. Zach. (laughs) Awesome. Very good. I want to kind of echo what what Zach said. He said he's excited to go out and share it. And be excited for them. Nobody else has this information. They don't. Your competitors don't. You've got a unique opportunity in today's crazy world with a crystal ball to share with them for over 590 business categories. Doesn't have everything, but you've got the businesses that you're calling on in the average week. You've got good, let me say one other thing and then we'll move on. I don't let chat too much. Many of you got businesses you've worked for for many years. They're your friends, okay? And you say, well, I'm already working with, I don't need to share the pulse information, et cetera, et cetera. I only share pulse with new business. May I suggest that for every existing business you have, you go out and you share right away, first thing, top priority, this new, fresh shopping information for their business. Why do I suggest that? Multiple reasons. Number one, it reinforces the value of your publication, your website, your audience to them, for them. So you don't get that phone call, well, I think I'm going to try radio for the next six months. That happens. They may be your best friends, but you can get that phone call. Well, I'm going to try ready. When they realize that you've got, you know, 6,000 households are going to change you into a dentist, they are much less likely to try other things because they realize the benefit. The second reason I suggest you go out and share it with all of your existing clients first is so many times when they realize the benefit, the opportunity for them, which is bigger than they thought. Why is it bigger? Because they forget about out-of-town shopping. They forget about the leakage from online shopping. And so for most of the businesses you're dealing with, they're not getting their full share. They're not getting the opportunity they should and could get. And so many times we just had a call with our clients up in New Jersey, and they said that they have gotten many of their existing businesses with their new research. They saw the opportunity. They increased the frequency of their commitment. And so it's a big opportunity. So it's a, 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 a I, I, if I was you guys, I'd write that down. Call on your existing businesses first. Share with them the good news. Reinforce the relationship, and it gives you an opportunity for an upsell. Okay. John, we have um, one or two more waiting to be let in, please. Oh, my gosh. Well, what happened to the participants here? God, too many screens open here. This is really weird. There we go. Okay. I'm going to leave it kind of open. Okay, should be good. Okay, spec ads. Somebody, somebody had asked or made the statement, you know, I'm having difficulty with the spec ads because I'm not able to edit them to my specifications. Okay, who brought up this question, concern, or point, please? Every... Okay, 
Hey, uh, John, it was Marilyn who just jumped on the call, so she's probably still trying to get her bearings, but um, it was Marilyn Hawkins. Okay. It was me. <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. I apologize. We're tardy today. Um, but yes, sir, that was me. I was trying to uh, rearrange some of the text of body of the copy mm -hmm. and to make it more specific and maybe i just wanted that spec add a little bit too specific is that what my issue would be yeah you answered your own question yes and i put <laughs> and i we had a great webinar about oh two three weeks ago with a gentleman from new jersey named chris scott and he was phenomenal in how he uses spec ads and what he said was and i put a link to the, we did about a six minute summary of his suggestions and ideas. What he has said was, is I use spec ads to get them to give me feedback. What do you like? What do you suggest? So I don't go in there with a finished spec ad. I go in there with just some starting point ideas to start to give them. Well, I like this. I don't like this. Can you do this? And so in answer to your question, yeah, don't be too specific. That comes later. The whole purpose of the spec ad is to get their feedback, okay, their buy-in. And then you can come back with a spec ad that is, how should we say, consistent in what they want. And then they're going to say yes. Okay. Okay? I felt like I might be a little bit too um, detailed-oriented on that when I was trying to make the sale and walk out with the ad completed. <laughs> Yeah, but, but you're right. If you're too, if too specific, and the ma'am, I can say, I was when I was an ad rep, I was when went, went, went with two spec ads. Which one do you like? Making the <laughs> assumptive close. Good idea. And it works. Well, I like this ad. Great. You just made a sale. So the link that is on the screen right now, and I apologize, coming late to the party, I'm, I wasn't sure if this link that you've given me uh, from Chris Scott, is that the benefit of the spec ads that we can yes, watch? Yes, it is. And I will send to you, Steve, this deck in this recording and then you can you guys can then click on the links that i put in here for you okay thank you okay thank you okay moving on okay too much work for not much payoff the prospecting aspect is not as effective from what i've seen so this wasn't you carson you you, you said we've covered year three right All right, I, I may have forgotten one. <laughs> All right, Carson, you are the hero of the day. <laughs> um, this one, I was actually just on my other monitor doing a prospect, and I went to Hot Prospects uh -huh. and looked under Family Style Restaurant. Uh -huh. And the results are uh, not great in my mind mm -hmm. as you know, you know uh, three fast food, four fast food places, yeah. a, a Chinese restaurant in Ashland, and Mama Ree's in Silicaga. And there's just nothing, uh, it feels like there would be so many more prospects. I, I, I guess maybe I don't understand why these are selected, or, I mean, there's just not much of a collection, you know, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, the reason for that is it's a Google mashup that Pulse does. And so in the keywords on each one of those restaurants' websites, it has fast or something associated. So in the Google mapping search, it displays all of the businesses that have that keyword. And so it is not perfect. Okay. It's a good starting point. It's just like if you, outside of Pulse, did a Google search, Google map search, and put in keywords you know, the businesses that would come up. Okay. So it's, it's darn good, but it's, it's, it's relative to what Google analytics displays in the search. So that's the reality. Okay. But most of the clients say it's pretty good and they can just click, 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 put it in their call planner and, and go out and make some presentations. Okay. So it's a resource and a tool. It's not perfect, Carson. Okay. All right. Do you have any more, Carson, you forgot about? 
<laughs> I, I, I think that's it. I want to say that's all. I'm pretty sure this time. <laughs> okay. All right. Too many options. This is a great one. And I presume that too many options means in the presentation types. We've got a teaser, a flyer, and a one page. And who, who asked this question or, 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 or uh, sent this concern? John, that's me. Um, I just, I've done each of them numerous times and I don't see a huge difference. And, and I also get kind of caught in that, that trap of when you have too many options, sometimes you just kind of give up and back away. Mm -hmm. um, not one of those in my experience so far takes a whole lot longer than the other. True. So I just, you know, to me, in my mind, I just we give reps all these options. It's just one more level of confusion. So that was just my, my concern. Okay, well, that's a good question. Let me, let me just share with you my thoughts. If you're engaging for the very first time and you want to open the door, start the conversation, I would use the teaser. Why? It's simple. It's one big number. You know, I thought you'd like to know we've got 8,000 households or back to the dentist. We've got 6,000 households are changing to get a new dentist. Would you like to know more? It opens the door. It starts the conversation. Okay. And so I use the teaser. If I don't have a relationship, it's a pure cold call. One big number, get their attention. You know, so they realize, oh, we got more information. Then I come back with a flyer because the flyer has the big number, how many opportunities for the business category, but then it has products and services. You know, like that example I showed you for the dentist, it has teeth cleaning, teeth brightening, you know, crowns, it has smile, you know, et cetera. It's got more information, okay? And so I come back with a flyer to find a solution. Where can we get you more business? What should you be advertising? The flyer is great to identify where opportunities are. It's kind of a discovery. Where can we get you more business, okay? Then the one page is the presentation that includes the campaign. So you're presenting a suggested campaign. You know, I suggest a 52 week program. It includes a two by seven each week. You know, you got a, you got a campaign price cost and it shares with them how few customers they need. And so the one page includes the big number. It includes the information from the flyer, but it also includes you're making a presentation, you're closing, okay? And the other thing that the one page includes that is very helpful, it overcomes objections, like in real estate, well, we're on Zillow, we don't need you. It shows that Zillow doesn't reach everybody, that there's a significant audience you reach that would not go to Zillow. And the same thing in automotive, it shows the the percentage of your audience that's missed by cars guru and you know the other automotive sites and so the one page in addition to having it's a presentation of a campaign it also shows them what they're missing the fragmentation in real estate in automotive with facebook with radio with television etc does that help tippy it does um just something to consider in terms of Boone. We use, instead of teaser, we would call that a cold call flyer. We would call that discovery. And then one page would be our annual presentation. Perfect. And I don't know, I may very, very easily be speaking for only myself, but that quantifies it a lot better. The way you explained it. And now if I think of the teaser as a cold call, flyer is the discovery. That's the way that um, the training is going every Monday with um, the entire group. So just a thought. Well, that's perfect. I mean, that's consistent with what I just, you know, just said. So we're echoing the same thing. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> so thank you, Tippy. Okay. So then I use Pulse for long term sales. I don't use Pulse for special sections or promotions. Who asked that question or, or made that point? Okay, so nobody's taking ownership of it. That's okay. Um, I already mentioned, I, and I showed when we were live on your John, site. John that, was, John, that was actually my point. Uh, okay, thank you. It's for that, you know, because I, I, I know, I, like I mentioned earlier, I know I've sold a lot. But all mine's been long-term sales, and I, I, I do sell a ton of special sections and promotions. I probably sell more of that than anything because that's kind of what we have always 
that's our niche for Clanton. It has been that way ever since I've been here. It's built on big promotions and big special sections. And, you know, Pulse in that regard does not and really doesn't work for that. But like we said, we we're talking a long-term deal or something. It's, it's great. I've used it and it's, it's been great. Yeah. Well, let me just kind of try to reinforce. We do have that special section prospecting tools, Zach that you can you know go into and get you know, more you know more specific ideas on who to target for special sections and the other thing is is using pulse on these different promotions i want to mention this before i forget our break even tool any of you guys use the break even tool that can be used with anything and everything you sell you know how few customers they need to pay for the you know to pay for that Okay. So even though it might be a specific promotion, there's still a cost involved and you can still get them to say yes quicker, faster when they realize, oh, I only need four customers, you know, to pay for it. So I might suggest that, Zach, is regardless if it's a special section or a promotion, you can still use the break-even tool. Okay. Okay. All righty. Okay. And let's see, there was a couple other ones. Is there updated training with the new features? Yeah, in the help, at the top of your screen, there's a help button. You click on that, and then there's training and there's videos. Click on that, and that's where we keep all the new videos, above and beyond what we have in the Pulse formal training certification. So we're always updating and adding new videos. It's under help, and it's under video. Or training okay and then I didn't totally understand can we include a target display audience option who asked that and help me out with what do you help me out with a little more clarity on that um John that was me again I, I realized on this call that you know we can do a custom audience so we could manually do it there but we do sell our targeted display I, I couldn't tell you the exact number but but it's 35,000 impressions and so if one person is seeing um, the ad say seven times that's um, you know 35,000 divided by seven but I wrote a minute note that I can either email the help desk or just click custom audience yes I think I, I, I figured that out through this training. Okay, perfect very good okay So are there any other questions? I've loved our get together this morning, even though at you know, 5.45 a.m. I was a little you know, groggy. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. John, I have two yeah, questions. Please. Uh, first of all, um, going back uh, several months, it was mentioned on one of our big boom calls that uh, they were working on, you know, combining uh you know letting brainworks and and mm -hmm. pulse kind of cohabitate together and get along is that still in the works or well we had to put it on hold because of the pandemic you know i'll be blunt we had to lay off some programmers we had a lot of clients cancel when the pandemic hit and the advertising dried up and so i about oh, it was about six months ago reached out to boone you know that let's 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 re-engage i haven't heard back from them it's a good reminder to do it again but right. it was the reality of the pandemic we had to take a step back all right and uh my other question is uh, i think you mentioned earlier that you work with like 600 newspapers or so mm -hmm. Um, how many of those are competitors to Boone newspapers in the same market? There might be overlap because a lot of papers are bought and sold today, but I'm not aware of any directly that compete with Boone. I mean, it does happen, but we, we under no circumstances would directly solicit a competitor of Boone. But we're working with, you know, corporate groups like Advance, you know, Lee, et cetera. And so there might be overlap down the road. Okay. Cause you guys buy and sell papers, they do, et cetera. Okay. Would you be able to share any of your competitors to, you know, to like the Tron market or the Clanton or the TPI market? Cause I, it would just be almost like embarrassing in one sense, if we go in to talk to a customer and you know, the day before a competitor had come in to give the same exact information. Well, I, well, first of all, I will double check, but, but I'm pretty darn sure there isn't any competitors. 
but you have your own unique boon information you know so this is our audience that you're presenting you know they would have their audience that they're presenting would it not be pretty similar i mean like a, a realtor and tryon mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know with the the boon information would that not be similar to what you know a competitor from you know the neighboring county would have it might be because the purchasing patterns are pretty similar but the bottom line is they're presenting their audience, you're presenting your audience. But I'll double check and make you know, sure that my statement, there, there is no overlap, okay? Okay, thanks. Yep. Don, I have a question. This is Marilyn. Yes, Marilyn. And it may have been addressed since I was late to the party. Um, on the, where you're choosing your audience, a lot yes. of times I'm gonna sell I'm going to sell one package that's going to cover Tallahassee, Wetumpka, and Alex City, plus mm -hmm. the magazine. But I'm not allowed to choose all of those audiences. Is there a way that I can do that and combine yeah, absolutely. it? Absolutely. So let me go back to your program here. Did you cover that? I can go back and look at the recording. Oh, that's fine. I'll, it's very, very fast. So let me just let me just come down here. So I got at the bottom of my screen. You remember this? At the bottom of your dashboard, you have all the presentations that you've done, which is great if on your, you can do this on your mobile phone, by the way, okay? And so you click on the presentation, up comes the presentation, and Marilyn, answer your question. You've got your flyer here, or your, or your one page, whatever. You click on the editing pen, and you don't have that combination. You just come down here to custom, click on custom and then put in paper A, paper B plus paper C, and then estimate the number of households, okay? And let's say it's, you know, 15,000, and then click on update, and then that presentation will then have the projection based upon that combination. Okay, so this is out of the, oh my gosh, look at that, 150,000 households reached by, Okay, so in answer to your question, yes, you can. You just click on the editing pan, you go down to custom and put it in. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. John, when you do that, um, it does not save that for future times, correct? It's just okay. that one time? It saves that flyer that you created with that audience, but it doesn't put it in that drop-down list. That's honest have to contact the support email that you exactly. mentioned. If you send it to support, we can add it to the list permanently. Okay. Okay. So if there, if there are any that you would like to add to that, to the drop down list, just send an email to support at pulseresearch.com and we'll be happy to do it for you. Okay. Awesome. Great questions. I'm going to keep the site live here. Any other suggestions, questions, et cetera? Okay, Steve, do you have anything in wrap up? Just want to remind everybody that, you know, the company as a whole and obviously our TPI is invested in this. And uh, it's imperative that we use the information, we use the tools that we have, and they will help you be successful. So I encourage you, uh, as you know, we generally win all the competitions. Uh, <laughs> You know, let's keep it rolling, guys. Uh, and uh, if we have problems or questions, you can't get answers. We'll have uh, John's contact info. We'll pick up the phone, we'll call, whatever you need. If you run into an obstacle, do not let it become an obstacle to a sale. Absolutely, Mark. And it's Marlin at paper.net, M-A-R-L-I-N-G at paper.net. Happy to assist. Thank you. I hey, and I have one thing to add. Um, yeah, we've had a, a, a huge amount of success in our Elmore County office. And just to put things into perspective, um, I had to turn in points for the, our, our NFL contest, whatever, BFL, whatever it is. Um, Marilyn Hawkins in our Elmore County office, single-handedly, she was one rep short this last Oh, Did anybody catch that? 
Your audio cut know. off halfway through. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't hear it either. Are they the only two on the call? Don't worry. He was just saying I'm a rock star, so y'all can just. <laughs> she had 357 pulse points. She for $28,000 in revenue sold during the month of September. Um, 400 and something percent of her goal. So. All right. Pulse, Good call, revenue, Elmore Good County. Yeah. Good job, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you for all the help. Okay, we appreciate and it. Everybody on here is equally as talented. So we uh, think that you can all do the same. So I appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Steve. Thanks, everybody. And thanks, Carson. Yay. <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you, John. Okay, I will put together the recording and send it off to you, Steve. Thank you. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks.